today we're going to take some wheel bearings out of a marked uh, out of here. Uh, these are G60 Corrado spindles. This is how you're going to do your big brake uh, upgrade for your Mark II. So you're going to need yourself a little set of C-clip, uh, a C-clamp tool. And you'll see here how this works. You go and get these little pins in here. And you're going to squeeze the two together and pry it out. It's better if I do it on the table. Hard to show you guys up front, but you're going to need a flathead screwdriver. So when you guys get the uh, space to pry in there, you're going to pry in there and you'll see that right there. The clip is already on its way out. Just grab it by hand and yank it out. There's two of them on this uh, on this spindle. One on the front, one on the back. Um, the second one is actually behind the hub. So we're gonna press out the hub really quick. Now the trick to this is you want to use as much surface area as you can. And you obviously want to get some height in it so the hub itself can actually pop right out. Once you have it there, line it up. So the hub is the inner portion right here of the, um, the wheel bearing right there. So you guys want to get a long deep socket. I use a 27 millimeter. Fits beautifully in there. And I just stack another socket right on top of it just like that. Just for the distance. Now what you want to do is make sure everything lines up straight not all sideways and wonky because if not it'll teeter or not go out straight and give you more of a headache like right now you'll see I'm off by about two or three millimeters around the diameter so be a little bit closer and line it up nicely so it doesn't have to be perfect but it has to be pretty centered so when you have the um, sockets there Obviously this is not the ideal way to do it, but this is the poor way of doing it, because I'm poor. And then, go all the way down. And just let it press all the way through on its own. It should pop out towards the end. Well, it almost popped out 100% of the way. Another uh, time I did it, pop right out. Pretty weird. Let's see here. See if I can smack it out with the hammer. Yeah, it came right out. It was right on the edge. So, very interesting. Actually, the uh, hub didn't come out. Well, I mean, uh, not the hub. The race didn't come. Uh, actually, stayed in place. Very, very rare that this happens, guys. If it does, say you're blessed because I was going to show you guys how to cut one of these off. I got another hub to show you guys that with. I'll show you guys how to cut the race off. Uh, it is very important because 99% of the time, the hub, uh, I mean not the hub, but the race comes out with the uh, hub. So you have to cut them out. Um, so now uh, you'll see there's another clip right here. So we're going to take that sucker out.
fly in. Now I hate pulling these out so much because they like to slide right out just like that. this. There we go. That clip is now out. Now the wheel bearing actually can pop right out. So there's two ways that this bearing can go wrong. Number one, it actually goes out one way and it comes in one way. Uh, this is the way you press it out. This is the way it comes out. And the easiest way you can tell is that you'll see there's a fat ring inside here. This ring right here um, pretty much is the inside of the hub. You always uh, push them out reverse so the um, wheel, uh, bearing usually goes in this way not through the back. And another way you can tell is that there's a, this lip right here is actually wider than the lip on the inside so that means it's not going to fit going that way. Just another way you can tell. Alright, correction. Um, I'm correcting myself right now in just a moment. Give me a second here. If I'm wrong. I forgot just how I pressed this one out. about this way. So the next thing is you're going to need a larger socket, uh, fifth, one and five eighths. That one is about the exact diameter of the um, inner race. through the back, through out through the front. And that's correct. Going right through. And then you reverse the process. You press through the front to make it go through the back. Alright, so it's on its way down. Um, let's see if I can give you guys a nice close-up of that. You guys see that pretty well? So you'll see right there, it's on its way down. Now usually what I do is I get a towel to catch everything that falls down. A lot falls down, so... It just makes it easier for cleanup. See that right there, just on its way out. Slow process, and then it's going to shoot right out once it pops out, and everything falls out with it, just like that. And cool thing is, since I had my little brace catch everything. Just 
grab my, my socket and everything. This is honestly the first time I've ever pressed out an entire bearing as one. That is very impressive. I've never done that before. Um, I'm excited. That was an easy job for me today. Usually they're a lot harder than this. So, that's done. So what you're going to do, once you do that, get yourself a little rag. Clean out all the debris on the inside. I uh, don't recommend sanding or polishing anything on the inside of these guys. All I recommend is just clean it up nicely. Uh, use some degreaser if you want to. But do not, and I say this, do not add anything special to it or uh, score it. Just leave it alone. Wheel bearings completely out. Now we're going to reverse the process. Now it's going to be a little different now because I have to push it down into it. Now what's fun, what's cool is that it's actually easier. We just got to find the right angle for it. Um, and I forgot how I did this earlier today. So what you want to do is you want to have the I'm trying to see if I can get that the majority of the weight pretty much on here. I'm trying to get it on the actual base of the hub. I mean, of the spindle. I'm gonna grab a new wheel bearing right now. So, a brand new wheel bearing. All you want to try to do is kind of like get it in there as even as you can. And then here's one of the hubs that I have and I used. I used this to actually press it in. Works beautifully. This gives it even pressure all around. We just got to make sure we line it up correctly. It's all about the initial line up here. Once you have it set, Start to ascend. And just pay, pay very close attention on how it goes down. I'm going to get you guys set up down here. I'm going to go to you a little bit further down so you guys can see what I mean. You guys got a good uh, view on that? I hope so. And then just work your way down. It will automatically line itself up and go down evenly as long as you start it off as even as you can. If for any reason the bearing is really sideways, stop as soon as you can because that will literally score the material and you'll uh, mess up your spindle itself. So that's not good. So I always try to keep it as even as I can. Once it starts going down nice and smooth, just work your way down. I said, just take your time. It's not a rush. And I just love using leftover parts to actually do a job. And 
There we go. Now, remember where that lip was underneath and on top? You can actually overshot, uh, overshoot the bearing past that. So what you want to do is get a little further down. Um, make sure not to press in the old bearing with it because it, it is an exact space. So this will end up pressing in. So you don't want to do that. Make sure you can just go past it about a millimeter or two. And that's it. Um, and then the rest of the way we're going to show you a different method. Because you have to see what you're doing when you're going further down. So, back to this big socket that we used prior. A little socket combination. you guys a little bit higher so you guys can see this. Alright, so now we're back into this little combination again. Now you'll see I'm off to the side. I'm going to slide my... and then I'm going to do the same thing. Go down and pay attention to the bearing going down and remember pay attention to that lip on the inside um, right now I just passed it should be set so once you do that take it out flip it back around and now what you want to do is put that clip back in Before you do it, clean it off so it goes in nice and smooth again. Doesn't matter which direction it goes, it's just as long as it goes in. That's all that matters. Squeeze it and get it down there. Once you have it down, it's easier to put them in than it is to take them out. Just, and then all you want to do is tap them down. So now the clip is actually not going in 100%. And that's because I went over a bit. Not a problem. This is what I actually want, I expected. So, so I can show you guys what to do if you guys do overshoot them. Or over over install the bearing. Just give it a little press back the other direction, not too much, just like just a little boop, and the clip itself should automatically line itself back in. And if you did it correctly, like I said just a little press. That's it, it went down a little bit. You're going to see the clip is now seated. And then you're going to repeat the process on the other side. Now since I had to go up, I have to go back down. Same process. Now my other one, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can actually put the clip inside here first. Once you get everything out, put the clip in first. Then press the bearing until it stops. But what happens is that some people will not pay attention and push further and not realize there's actually pressure pushing back on it. So now you actually have a you have an idea on how much further back you have to go. Um, I did that the other way on my on mine on the first wheel bearing came out flawlessly. Uh, this one, like I said I like showing you guys the problems and the errors that you can create. 
this is a great learning tool um, because that's how we learn is by mistakes so I want you guys to learn by watching me instead of you trying to do it yourself So, same process. Now, this is where I told you. If you haven't used a press ever, you're gonna you're gonna need to learn how to feel for it. And, and what I mean by feel for it is when it goes down, you're gonna feel the pressure go down, and you're gonna feel the wheel bearing go down, and then that's it. I heard it stop it didn't even move any further that means we are bottomed out um, you actually can feel that through the pump where it goes and it goes clunk and it won't go any further that means you've officially made the bottom and that's it you can't you can't go any further and see that it's still spinning it's doing its job and it's still spinning over here so now we install the old clip on this side Clean it off just like before. That's all the way seated back in. If you know if you did the job right, both sides are in flush, and that's in there flush, and then these bearings can actually spin freely still on both sides. That's been done correctly, real, real easy. Okay, now, if you didn't, weren't so lucky as I was, and the uh, hub actually just popped right out, where the hub has what they call a race on it. This is what we call a race is the inside of the bearing where it stays on the hub because it's it's stuck on there a lot of guys will actually just chisel my like put a I'll show you guys right now let me just explain to you let me get set up and then you guys can see what I mean you know my my uh, my workstation is very small so I have to make things work you know so what I do is I have that let me get my vise uh, I just had it here too oh. See, I don't have a vise on the table I have a vise on a press makes my space more I guess useful I'd like this mounted on a table, but I don't have the space for it. So, you guys see that? You're gonna grab your hub. You're gonna put it on the vise. Now make sure it's at the lip, not actually on the actual bearing right there. And put it on there nice and snug. Now this is gonna get really hot. I mean really loud. So I highly recommend turning the volume down. But what you're going to do, you're going to cut it at an angle. And the reason why I say an angle, because if you cut straight, you'll see that it hits the uh, hub itself. You don't want to cut into the hub. You want to cut it into the actual bearing. So we go to an angle, and you just cut in, okay? So pay attention. Volume will get loud. Turn it down, and enjoy. into 
it, get yourself a hammer and a chisel. Let me find my hammer. Here you go. And what you can do is that notch that you created in here by cutting sideways, you're going to bang on it. And usually, a good little bang should crack it. And then... Should break it loose. Just like that. Voila. And that's how you get a race off a wheel bearing. Pretty easy. Now we have to install the actual um, hub back into the spindle. So clean off your uh, hub. We're not going to use this one because this is from a Mark II. This is a different style hub. And use a Corrado one. So all right. So now we're going to install the uh, wheel bearing. I mean, I'm sorry, the wheel hub to the uh, spindle. Uh, there's a couple ways you guys can go about this. Um, you can put the hub down here and just push this down like this, or you can actually press the hub down. It really doesn't matter. Um, it's just whichever way is easier for you guys. I'm going to press the hub down. So I just got to find a good little spot here. Let's see here. Here's the hub. Now clean this guy off nicely so it looks nice and shiny again. And you're going to line the sucker up right in here. Just like that. Now what you want to do is center it as best you can. As always, uh, anything with to do with wheel bearings, you got to center stuff, man. And then Line it up. And make your way down. I'm almost out of recording time, so I gotta hurry. So I gotta empty out this memory card. So, same process, pay attention. Go down slowly before I forget. I have a big uh oh right now. My two by four is not underneath the actual metal portion. No bow. Okay. Back to doing this. And just keep an eye on the spindle itself and the hub. Make sure it goes down nice and straight. If all is well, you should feel the hub um, press through the other side already. And then that's it. It shouldn't move anymore. 